salmon farming once looked like the salvation of coastal communities. Two generations later, it provokes bitter opposition in those same villages, sometimes from its erstwhile supporters. Meanwhile, those who once opposed it now support it. Here's opposition leader Daryl Dexter in 2007, speaking against fish farms in Port Mattoon. But now he's the premier, and his government strongly supports a massive expansion of salmon farms in the coves and village harbors of Nova Scotia, including Port Mattoon, which still doesn't want them. What's going on with the lobster population when tr traditional knowledge says that they came in here in the spring? That fish farm took a whole bay nursery area out of, out of production. What I try to do uh, in many of the discussions that I have with people uh, is try and move the debate from should salmon farming happen to it's going to happen, how should it happen? Does net cage salmon aquaculture really create good jobs? Or by fouling the water with sewage, pesticides, dye and antibiotics, does it destroy better jobs in tourism, recreation, shellfish aquaculture and the all-important lobster fishery? And to me, aquaculture is a natural fit. It's a natural fit uh, with our coastal communities and I think there's opportunities. And that I've actually, as a fisherman, fished alongside of aquaculture sites and I've seen the numbers of lobster landings, landings in the last 30 years triple. Just from uh, fishing lobster traps around the, the, the sites, uh, what we find is when they first put the salmon in, and it seems that if you set uh, a trap close to a site, you'll do quite well. There uh, seems to be good lobster fishing around the site. So in the spring, uh, if they put them in in the spring, the, the fishing would be good, or if they put them in in the fall, the fishing in the fall would be good. In the next time, uh, the fishing isn't so good. It's not quite as good as it would be everywhere else. You'll still catch a few lobsters around the site, but you'll also catch some crabs and uh, so on. Uh, but uh, if you wait till the next season, when they're about ready to come out, you'll catch no lobsters. You'll catch some crabs and start catching starfish in your traps. And uh, to us, starfish are a sign of uh, this uh, bottom has run its course. You know, that's the last, uh, when they're gone, there's nothing left. Wild Atlantic salmon are endangered, but they're still worth $225 million a year to Atlantic Canada, and ordinary citizens are working hard to revive them. This $750,000 machine, bought by volunteers, feeds lime into the Sheet Harbor West River to combat the effects of acid rain. In 2000, salmon were considered extinct in this river. In 2011, it was home to 11,500 juvenile salmon. Salmon farms attract parasites and disease which they treat with pesticides and antibiotics. That threatens the remaining wild salmon and all the work that's been done to revive them. Now, salmon farming is raising major issues about democracy. Of 135 submissions about the new farms off Freeport, 134 were opposed. The community is suing the government for permitting the farms, which are supposedly intended to support community development. This has nothing to do with community development. This has to do with developing the profit margin of Cook Aquaculture and also the province seems to think it's going to improve its bottom line as well. But it's not going to uh, create jobs for, for the, the people here in uh, Freeport or Westport or uh, Tiverton or Long Island, any of those places. What it's going to do is it's actually going to take jobs away. So that's not community development. It's going to take good jobs away. That's not economic development. At least it's not economic development for us. And the wishes of the communities don't seem to matter at all. Good evening, everyone. I'm Cindy Webster. I'm the Director of Aquaculture Management for uh, Fisheries and Oceans. And can everybody hear me? For these sites, we're just starting to look at this. So um, as I said, we take all those concerns very seriously and consider those when we're, we're doing our uh, advice. Uh, and I've only been with aquaculture for 10 years, and uh, we have not turned down a uh, salmon farm in the 10 years I've been here. I feel like I'm like a black fly and I'm just buzzing around 
you know, the provincial government's ear and, you know, I'm just a pest. So they're just constantly swatting me away, swatting me away. And, and, that, and that's essentially, that, that's a good analogy because that's what it is. What? Salmon Wars, a video documentary produced for free distribution, is a special project of thegreeninterview.com, and it's being financed entirely by citizens concerned about the environmental and social impact of net cage salmon farms. To make a tax-deductible contribution, please send a check to Salmon Wars, care of the Ecology Action Centre, 2705 Fern Lane, Halifax, Nova Scotia, B3K4L3.